What's going on everybody? So today I'm getting back on Project Mixed Up Boss and today what we're going to do is work on this tunnel ram and we're going to port it and the opposite thereof. So you'll have to watch it all the way to see what I'm talking about. This is a Cleveland tunnel ram that I'm putting on my Windsor based Boss 429 headed small block. It is Project Mixed Up Boss. So if you haven't watched any of the other videos, I suggest you go back and check out the playlist for it. But uh, yeah, we got a lot of work to do. So when you last seen this, you noticed that it had a big mismatch here in the plenum. And we're going to have to do something about the mismatch of the Windsor style port along with the uh, Cleveland style runner here. Luckily, the mismatch wasn't that bad. I'll put a picture of it in so that you can actually see the mismatch. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to port match the upper plenum top to the lower half. And then we're going to have to use this Goodson epoxy to fill up the runners to make the port match on the bottom side of the head face. Um, looking at this plenum here, you can see on this side it has a, a provision there for you. You could drill and tap and have a, a nozzle or like a vacuum port. And I'm assuming, based off of my other tunnel rims, that that is supposed to go to the rear of the manifold. The problem is the mismatch is a lot greater that way. In order to do this right, I need to put some bolts in this to locate it. But you can get a good idea of just how much of a mismatch there is between the upper and the lower halves. So, in playing with this thing for a little bit, I found that it actually fits better putting it on in the opposite direction. Which means less work. You see, there, there's still a mismatch there, but it's not as great. So that's what we're going to go with. The first thing I've done is actually tighten the two halves together with bolts so that it won't move around. Second thing I'm going to do is get my die come out here, and I'm going to actually paint the mismatch so that I have a guide to work with with the die grinder. You can use a scribe or something like that, but I just had to dike them here on the table from doing my valve train, so I thought I would use that. Alright, let's see what we have here for our layout. There you go, you can see the edge there where we need to grind. And... Um, yeah, so let's get to it. Alright, before we start cutting on this manifold, we need to talk about some things that's unique to this manifold that's actually a hindrance. So, when you take a look at this, take it, show it to it, you notice that it has what I call a reverse taper. It has a smaller cross section at the entry here than it does at the head face. So part of what we're going to be doing here is enlarging this area to create our own taper in the, man, uh, in the runner itself. There's also a thing, come around here so you can show it, let's look. If you look straight down the runner, you can see that there's actually an edge that we can remove here and you can see it right here you see how it goes straight down before it starts to angle into the head itself now if you go to my buddy tim halstead's channel uh drag boss he's done a video on bob glidden's pro stock engine and you can actually see that on his manifold that he would weld this area up so that he can make us a better line of sight 
and completely remove that. Now I'm not going to go to that extreme, but I am going to remove as much material as I can from inside there to give a good line of sight picture and it's also going to help with our taper situation. As you can see, I'm just using a cheap Harbor Freight die grinder here. These things work really well for what they are and the money involved, but I am using some really good bits that I got from my carbide bits from my buddy David Visard. Uh, he, he sources them from Goodson, so this here will make short amount of time of grinding on these uh, runners. Okay, so I pretty much have this runner roughed out. And you can see the difference in the, the turn here and how I laid that corner back. And I took it out to, there's only probably about a hundred thousandths there. I'm not gonna push my luck. If I were doing this as a professional deal, I would actually weld this area up outside here and grind this to where it's a straight shot but this will work for this application for now well that was a long seven hours but that's the kind of time it takes to do stuff like this and do it right you can see that i've got the runners uh, roughed out and it has a better line of sight i laid that wall back as much as i possibly could without breaking through to the other side and so now what's next on the agenda is actually taking the upper and bolting it on and blending this transfer right here because there's actually a lip i don't know if you can see it or not but there's a lip in the upper half here the plenum and so we're going to get this matched up and uh start doing mods to the plenum itself so now you can see that i have blended the upper half with the lower and you can see that i actually made this part of the bell mouth and tapered it in to give a more gentle radius so that's pretty much the gist of what i'm trying to go for here okay now that we got the upper and lower blended we're going to do a mod using my ryobi uh, screw gun air drill to do what david visard calls anti streaming divots and what that the purpose of this is as fuel is dumped into the plenum not all of it stays in suspension in the air sometimes it'll fall out and these little divots will keep it from just running into random runners and it will actually help promote kicking it back up into the airstream so let me do the other side here show you how it's done so there's no real science in it i just make sure that they're evenly spaced on the plenum floor there and i start in the middle and go to the outside
Well, folks, this is it for this part one. Make sure you tune in to watch part two because that's when we're gonna start filling the bottom half of the runners up with epoxy. And I'm gonna also talk about the importance of having taper in the runner itself and what it does and how it affects performance. So until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I'll catch you later.